What's up guys? Happy New Year. Hope you're having a good one and have some great goals for this new year. Well, for me, I'm going to try to release uh, nice steady videos this year. That's that's the big thing for this channel. Uh, today we're going to go over the strategy pattern and the strategy design pattern. I'm going to code it up in C++ and give you a generic example. But basically what this does is it kind of allows you to swap out algorithms or functions rather on the fly so that if you're working with something and you want to do it a different way for whatever reason, then you can. So generally what you need is some sort of um, a set of data, we'll say, that you pass into a function and you know, your function will execute that being, say, strategy or algorithm one. And then if you want to switch that, you can have another version of this function that does the still the same call, but executes a different option. Now, of course, the brute force way of doing this is if else, probably don't want to do if else too much. I mean, you can if you want to, but I'm um, kind of learning it initially from this website. Not bad. Uh, we'll go over it super quickly here because this is pretty generic. So you want an interface that has a virtual method method of execute of, or call it whatever you want, execute to find name. And then you can inherit from this interface. And if you watch the other design pattern stuff, you'll know kind of where this is going. Then you implement there's different interfaces with different strategies. And then later we'll make a class and one of its members is gonna be this strategy interface and we can set it to any concrete one that we've implemented. And then, you know, once we're running the real thing, uh, we can we can just call it. We can call execute strategy and it's gonna execute the current one. If we wanna change the strategy, we can pass in a different strategy. So uh, yeah, that's a quick summary. Um, let's go ahead and code it up. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, I'm on the design patterns repo link down below if you need it. And we're going to just make some new stuff. I'm going to add a new folder and we'll call this one strategy. I know a lot of you have liked seeing this being related to like video game stuff. So maybe we could do it in that method of a video game type of strategy. Uh, so let me think of something on that. Now, you know, we could have like a strategy for executing normal attacks and a strategy for executing critical attacks. But the problem I foresee with that is that, well, we don't necessarily want to be swapping pointers every time there's a crit and then swapping back every time there's not. That would just be too many swaps. Usually you want to swap once and kind of leave it there for a while and then swap it back if something major changes that's going to stay changed. You don't want to swap it like every frame or something. That would be incredibly intensive for something that's running in a loop and supposed to be efficient. So let's think of something else. Okay, let's let's consider leveling. Um, let's think of something like, okay, you know, in a lot of games you like level an ability and as you level it, the ratios of things change and the algorithm that calculates this damage might change. So let's consider something like that and let's just do a couple levels and switch it on on that so all right let's just uh keep it a little simple here and let's do let's make a class here a concrete one and let's call this you know i'm getting to thinking about this and i'm probably like over complicating and making it more confusing a great thing to do this on would be pathfinding if you want to switch pathfinding strategies that would be a great one because those can vary pretty greatly uh, depending on different things. Um, but usually you find the best one and stick with it. So it's one of those things too. So you really got to have a specific niche case for this, but let's just, uh, let's just go off of a leveling system. So we'll say like we have a level one type of strategy for how things are calculated and two and three, and that's as far as we'll go. So we'll go like level one strategy. And you know, if it were a game, uh, per se, it wouldn't be just execute. It would be like different things would be like there's uh maybe melee attack okay and then there's let's say maybe ranged attack and it's just going to return an integer so obviously there would be a little more to this but we can get to that shortly um let's say we pass in an integer just called base and this will be like you know the starting base all right so we'll have a level one strategy of of doing these attacks and then we'll do a level two uh and so on so we're just gonna make sure we inherit from strategy and then we need to make sure we define these pure virtual methods so let's go ahead and do that all right so we want to just define these and uh it's going to get easier from here on out now that we've kind of got a structure make sure you put the override keyword here that way everything knows that it is overriding the base strategy ones there we go all right so we do a level one strategy we have a base and you know in your wherever you're calling this you might have other stuff but let's say let's just add another thing here just to have more fun we'll have a bonus 
That'll be like maybe your weapons damage or something because you'll have a base or maybe your strength or who knows what or dex. But we'll say we have to pass that in. Uh, obviously, uh, you should also probably be doing these by const ref, uh, but I'm kind of skipping over that. And in general, the compiler will probably optimize it anyway. So not a huge deal. But OK, so level one strategy, we just are going to return base plus bonus. That's it. Just a simple, straightforward base plus bonus. And still I'm thinking of base as like base weapon damage and bonus is like your attribute or something. So pretty straightforward, just a very simple straightforward. But what about level two? So let's copy this. Let's make a little, what happens at level two? You, you want to hit a little harder, right? Now your stats might increase, so that might change, but likely the weapon's going to stay the same. So you want to, you want, uh, you know, this is just all hypothetical. So you might, for the level two strategy, you might say just a plus two in there. We'll just add, add a bonus two at level two. That's simple. You know, we could do multiplication or all kinds of interesting scaling stuff, but we're just going to keep it really simple here. And we're going to go for level three and we'll just make this a four. So we're going up like two per level and, uh, and that'll be that. So. Uh, yeah, I think that's good enough for now. We don't really need to do a whole lot of other special stuff. Let's go to our main and just test this out. So we got strats. Let's go ahead and implement uh, a class that uses this. So we got strats. Let's, uh, let's just make another header. That'll be good enough. Make a new file. We're just going to call this our, our player for now. Let's do it all in a dot H since it's all going to compile into this main and we'll just make a class called player and we're going to do some composure methods here. I know a lot of you guys love the composition over inheritance. So this kind of makes use of that, at least at this part, because uh, say, well, we want this to be private. Privately, we're going to have a strategy. So strategy, and it's got to be a pointer so we can actually do the dynamic changing it. And uh, we'll just call it level strat, I guess. Very good. Of course, we need to include strategy or it's not going to know what it is or strats. All right. And we want some public methods here. We want a, we want a set strategy, of course, set strat. And we're just going to take a strategy pointer easy enough. And we also want like an execute method. Um, well, we have attacks in our case, so we could just say execute strategy. Um, but in our case, we're going to, you know, we have two different strats in there that we might want to call. So we're going to say melee attack and we'll pass into this melee attack, uh, weapon damage or base base damage. So that might change. If you're punching with your fist, you got the base damage from your fist. That's what I'm thinking. This is all hypothetical. If you've got a weapon, you're going to take the base damage from that. And the other one is going to be like our stat bonus. And you can make that up however you want. Um, we're going to define these in the header in this case, and rather than having a bunch of C++ classes. Uh, strat, of course, is just going to just gonna set this to strat. And you can see here, we're not really doing the memory management in this class. So that's assumed you're doing that elsewhere because uh, obviously these pointers the memory for what's in them exists somewhere, but it's kind of assumed you have a system here. We'll probably do it in our main uh, for now. All right, so we got a melee attack and we got a ranged attack. Now range attack probably needs more stuff like range increments or something, but we're just ignoring that factor for now. This should be all we need. So if we do the melee attack, we're gonna go level strat uh, dot melee attack and pass in these, these things. And the bonus is this other one and it should just execute that. Now it's going to return. We uh, need some return values here because we want the return is basically what the final number is. So we want to make sure we get that in here. So there we go. Got a melee and a ranged attack. And as we level up, we can set this. Now, um, this definitely needs to be set. Keep that in mind. Like if this is a null pointer, you're going to get null references and it's going to error out. So let's just make a required constructor here that takes the strategy to begin with. So you got to initialize it with something uh, just to, you know, we could put checks instead to make sure it's not null, but uh, this will just save us some time, if you will. So level strat is going to equal strat. I will set it to that pointer. This might be a great case for using shared pointers because that would auto manage this memory. Because uh, if these are shared pointers, for example, I'm not going to do it here, but you can if you want to practice a little. Uh, if you make uh, in your main later, if you make it a shared pointer, and then you know you pass shared pointers in here, of course you'd have to include memory and make these shared pointers, you know, like that. Like I said, not going to do it here. But this would be a great case. Someone asked recently, when do you use shared pointers? And it's basically when you're like using 
things in multiple places, because if you think about it, this level strap might be used on a bunch of different characters throughout the game, and you don't want to instantiate a bunch of times, you want to use the same pointer, but then you got to keep track of who's all using it so you don't delete the real one, and that's what a shared pointer does, it doesn't delete the real one until nothing's using it. So, it would be a great case here for that sort of thing. But we're all done with this player, and uh, our strats look good. Now our main, this would be like the game. So, uh, let's include our player. Very cool. And let's just instantiate a player. Um, and the player wants a starting strat. So let's go ahead and get a strat ready. Or maybe even a few strats ready. So we'll get a level 1 strat, L1 strat. Oh, we'll just call it L1. Now, these can be pointers if you want, like so. Um, but they don't actually have to be. So, uh, you know, you just got to be careful about how you pass it around. Because even when something's not a pointer, you can still get a pointer to it to pass to things that want a pointer. You just got to be really careful about the lifetime. Because these right here will be, you know, they will delete when they go out of scope, which is when the main exits. So that's kind of okay here. Um, but if they're pointers, well, they'll also delete uh, when the program exits, but they won't delete when it goes out of scope. So keep that in mind. Uh, you probably already know that already if you're decent with C++. But just, you know, never hurts to get a little more practice with pointers if you're not sure of them. So maybe try it both ways. Try making this a pointer. Try making a shared pointer. Just some things you could do to further your practice if you feel like this isn't quite enough for you or something. All right, so now let's make our player. Uh, we'll just call it player one. And, of course, player one wants to be instantiated with a pointer to some strategy. So we want to pass it level one. Now, obviously, it's not going to accept this because this is not a pointer, but we can go reference, and a reference will be the starting memory address, which is essentially a pointer. So that should instantiate. Okay, and now we can go, uh, maybe we'll do a little C out here. We'll just include, and we'll just do some attacks. Uh, we'll go level one melee attack. All right, we're just going to pass in the base as all ones for now, I think. Uh, I'll put a damage. Here. And all we want to do is just call player one dot melee attack. And now may when we call this melee attack, oh we need to pass it some stuff. Yeah, let's just pass it once. Base damage and stat bonus. Now when we call this melee attack, it's gonna of course defer to whatever strategy we're using in that melee attack. That's that's essentially the algorithm switching that we're considering here. All right, we'll do the same thing for range, just so you can see it, although you probably already know, uh, you know, there's not much difference between these, but just for sake of example and to show, and show that you can kind of have as many different ones as you want, and these different switches, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, cool. So next, we probably just want to level up, and, and essentially for us, our leveling up is setting it to a different strategy. So we'll just make it very verbose. Level up. And now, to level up, we want to set this strategy. Now we know we made a method called set strat, or set strategy, whatever you want to call it, and we'll just set it to level 2. Once again, we do have to do this by reference, and there we go. So now we can call these same things, and we know that these melee and ranged are now going to get the plus 2. So if we go look at it, it's going to call use the strat, and we go look at the strat. It'll be this level 2 one now. And we can put this in debug mode when we run it and walk through. Let's make sure we update our Couts because these aren't dynamic. They're just hard-coded in right there. Though we could make them dynamic if we really wanted to get fancy. Like, we could put all this Cout stuff within the, the strats itself. And But I, I'm preferring to avoid IO stream in this class because I want to keep it clean uh, since it might be reused a lot. And whoever's reusing it might not necessarily want IO stream in their project, if that makes sense. Um... All right, so there we go. We got a level two attack. Now let's go ahead and go to level three. So another level up. Uh, let's set it to level three strat. And here we go. Level three, level three, do some attack. So what we should see is every time after this level up, we should see that we do more damage, basically. I'm going to put some new lines at the end of this. Otherwise, it's going to be all jumbled together. Cool. So, of course, you know, just to further talk a little bit more, you could do this with anything. You could do this with hit points. Someone remind me to mute my phone when I start recording. It's not enough to turn down the volume. You have to turn down the notification volume on your phone, which, you know, I always turn down the volume, but then it's like, oh, notification. It doesn't care where your volume is. It's going to ding. All right. Fully muted now. All right, let's go ahead and run this. I think I kind of want to put like a, just a little C out or a, something to freeze between these level ups. So um, we're just going to make like a, 
just make a character, I guess. Just something to input. Character A, sure. Just so we can have like a a point in our console where it waits before leveling up. So there we go. So now it's just gonna our console's gonna stop at this step. So we'll be able to slowly go through it and just kind of hit enter. Alright, so let's go ahead and hit uh, play on the strategy. Let's uh, go ahead and change the name. It's not strategy fib anymore. It's my old strat strategy. All right, now that C make is done parsing there, switch it to strategy or in release mode. That's fine. Let's hit play and let's just make sure it works correctly. There we go. Our first attacks do two damage as expected. Our next one we're expecting, well, let's hit enter so we can level up. Oh, I guess we got to enter character. There we go. We got to level up. Oops, got a little additional stuff in the C out there. I guess I could fix that real quick. Uh, oops, there we go. Let's go ahead and stop this and restart it. Okay, here we go, hit and play. There's our level one attacks, as expected. Let's go ahead and hit uh, enter. There's, I guess we gotta put in some character because it's ignoring those new lines for the CN. All right, uh, yeah, we do four damage. Press a button and level up again, level three, and yeah. That's that's the strategy. You just change the strategy, runs a different algorithm, but you're not changing anything on your end. Like you still pass in the same stuff. So that's that's the cool thing about it, and really the whole point. And great for dynamic switching on the fly. And uh, yeah, leave any comments down below. Let me know if you learned something. Uh, feel free to practice with those other methods, like try making these a pointer, try try it with shared pointers, or maybe try it in your own program with more elaborate stuff and yeah let us know how that goes all right see you in the next one peace out